Before I jump into the old pre-meds podcast, I just want to make an announcement that the pre-med years episode that went out today, episode 393, was a raw discussion with an African-American pre-med student who has been accepted to medical school, where I initially brought her on to talk about her interview journey that she had talked about on Twitter, that the racism that she encountered on her interview trail and just the, the things that happened on her interview trail, I brought her on for that. And then we had the brutal killing of George Floyd in Minneapolis. And we talked a lot about that and what students who are not minority, who don't come from disadvantaged backgrounds, people like myself who are white, who have privilege, what we can do to help society move forward to help our future classmates move forward and to be better physicians moving forward. So please go check out that interview. Again, that's pre-med years, session 393. You can go to premedyears.com slash 393. As well on National Pre-Med Day, which happened on May 28th, that was a 12-hour live stream that we did on YouTube and on Facebook. If you go and watch that over at mapped.tv, that's M-A-P-P-D dot TV, if you go watch the first session of National Pre-Med Day, I had an amazing discussion with three African-American physicians from Tour for Diversity. And that happened three days after the killing of George Floyd. And we talked about what we can do as a society moving forward with that as well. So go check those out. And I hope that as either a white privileged person coming up or someone maybe who's a minority who also is privileged but needs to understand and needs to listen and needs to learn about how we can help all of those who are disenfranchised and oppressed in this country, how we can help all of them. So go check those out, and I hope you enjoy this episode. Welcome to the Old Pre-Meds Podcast. My name is Dr. Ryan Gray, here to help answer your questions. You ask the questions in the non-traditional pre-med form over at premedforms.com, and I answer them here on the Old Pre-Med Podcast. And today is no different. We have a great question from a student wondering about kind of next steps in their journey. Our student today says, I am a 25-year-old female who graduated from an undergraduate institution in 2017 with a BA in biology. Not sure why it wasn't a BS as I took 102 science credits, but apparently it was just the degree offered. That's okay. doesn't matter. During school, I worked as a CNA and a music librarian. Since I graduated, I've been working as a medical scribe in a clinic, ER, and hospital, which has helped solidify my desire to become a physician. Recently, I started working as a pharmacy technician to be able to save up for application fees and tuition. I've been looking through various post-bac programs, masters, SMPs, etc., but I've come to a standstill over the past couple of months in my spare time. I did okay in college, cumulative 3.37, science 3.13, due to needing to work throughout this time. Freshman is 347, cumulative science 318. Sophomore, cumulative 304, science 275. Junior, cumulative 363, science 349. And the same for senior year, 363, 349. I did take the MCAT in 2019 and got a 493. I am just not sure if I should go through an undergraduate postback, graduate postback, master's, or special master's program. I understand the breakdown between the various programs, but I'm looking for advice as to which program I should truly look into and apply for the fall of 2021. Any thoughts, advice, suggestions, or anything else is greatly appreciated. Thank you in advance. All right, so here's the question, really, is is a very common question, is what should I do, right? What should I do as a student who needs to potentially improve my chances of getting into medical school. Now, this student has a 337 overall. I'm not sure why. The the math doesn't seem to make sense unless the junior and senior year credits weren't a lot. But the math for a 347, 363, 363, 363 cumulative with the 1304, the, the 337 cumulative looks a little bit low. But that's the math. Um, I'll assume it is correct. Uh, and we'll we'll use that. So really one bad year 
potentially setting off this student. So the question is, first off, do you need a post -bac, a master's, or an SMP? Do you need one, right? A 337-313 science GPA with an upward trend with those sciences of 349s the last two years, cumulative 363 the last two years. That's pretty darn good. Now, overall, it doesn't look great, but the trend is there. The trend looks good. So my first question is, do we really need a post -bac program at all? Do we need to improve grades? Now, obviously, the MCAT score is nowhere near where it needs to be. And that low of a score tells me either this student doesn't have the foundation to do well on the MCAT, and so potentially retaking some of those science courses will help, or they were just so far removed from their courses, right, having graduated in 2017 and taking the MCAT in 2019 that potentially they're so far removed from those courses that they just didn't refresh well enough. Now, obviously the MCAT is a test to see how well you can take the MCAT, but you need that foundational science knowledge to really help you do well on the MCAT, right? It's a critical thinking and reasoning test, but you need that science foundation to do well as well. So while there are a lot of reasons why a student wouldn't do well on the MCAT, including, again, not having a good foundation in sciences, not taking enough practice tests, not really just understanding what the MCAT is all about, my initial concern is that, yeah, the student needs to take more of those undergraduate science courses, learn how to be a better student, improve their study habits, and then translate that into then preparing for the MCAT in a better way. The question is, how do you improve your GPA? Is an undergraduate post -bac better than a master's, better than an SMP? The answer is really, it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, what a student needs to do, what you need to do, is show that you can do well in medical school. At the end of the day, that's what medical schools want to see. They want to see an academic achievement in your transcripts that will hopefully translate into you being a solid student in medical school. Now, depending on the school, they will have cutoffs, they will have different filters set up to screen out students at various steps along the way. Now, luckily, this student is probably high enough that those filters aren't going to come into play. Having a 337 cumulative is low, but probably not too low to be filtered out. A 313 science GPA, again, probably not too low to be filtered out. And so if this student went and did an undergraduate post -bac, that will affect their undergraduate GPA, those, those numbers that we just read out, but they're not going to move it a ton. Once you have a degree, you have so many credit hours that your denominator is so big that it's probably not going to affect your total GPA very much. It will affect your trend, and so this student can go from that, uh, let's just read the science here, 318 to 275 to 349 to 349. Hopefully we can get that up to like a 38 during a post -bac. That will be a great trend that the medical schools can see and can evaluate on. A graduate degree will be a completely separate line as, as is your post -bac, but it's a completely separate calculation for your GPA. The ACOMIS application can work in your graduate GPA into your undergraduate GPA for a total GPA. But remember, what you see on paper when you print out your application can be and likely is very different than how medical schools review your application. The medical schools just get data points. They get all of the data that you put into the application, and they can sort and display and filter however they want. So they can only look at your biology GPA. They can only look at your last 20 hours of science credits. They can remove a year of classes from your GPA if you did poorly. How the medical schools look at your GPA is going to be different than how you can see your GPA when you print out your application. So at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter what you do, SMP, master's, or undergraduate post -bac. At the end of the day, what really matters is that you do well. 
you prove to yourself and you prove to the medical schools that you are academically capable of succeeding in medical school. Because at the, at the end of the day, that is all that the medical schools need to know. They need to know that you are going to do well in medical school. Once they are confident in that, then they can move on to the rest of your application and look at all of the other amazing things that you are doing. Until you prove that you are academically capable of getting through medical school, then they don't really care about any of the other stuff. So whether it's an undergraduate post a master's, or that special master's program, you need to do whatever is right for you. If you are like a lot of students who I talk to, and they do an undergraduate post a lot of times you can't get financial aid for those. And so students are continuing to work, continuing to distract themselves from the very thing that they need to be doing, focusing on school and doing well. And so a lot of students will look towards the master's to get financial aid because financial aid is still eligible to them. That way they can have their school paid for and they don't have to work or maybe work as much as they would in a different situation. In that way, they can finally show that they can be successful when they're focused only on school and not on everything else. So hopefully this was helpful for you. At the end of the day, like I said, it doesn't really matter what you do as long as you are successful in doing that thing. So whatever you need to do to set yourself up for success, that is what I need you to focus on. Do well in your classes, keep getting the experiences that you need to prove to yourself and to prove to medical schools this is what you want, and get a better MCAT score. Because at the end of the day, you need those things to get to the point where they care about everything else in your application. I hope this was helpful for you. If you have questions you want answered here on the old pre-meds podcast, go to premedforms.com, ask your question there, and I hope I get to answer it in the future. Have a great week, and understand if you are a student who comes from a minority background, who is a person of color, know that we stand with you, and we support you in whatever you're going through. Have a great week. We'll see you next time here on the old pre-meds podcast.